Yeah, I am so fucking excited right now. I've been waiting for this for... <sighs> yeah. If you don't know by the title and everything, this is the Heatblur F14 Tomcat. Uh, the B version, meaning that it is a slightly more advanced version than what has been shown in some other media. Uh, the A version will be coming later on. And uh, this bird features, amongst other things, uh, Rio AI. We got Jester back there. Hello, Jester. Uh, you will be doing part of my duties now. Uh, instead, of, unlike the Hornet, uh, Jester is in control of the radar and stuff like that. So he will be happy to help me out, I think. So the first thing we're go going to do is... Um, Try and get this um, ejector seat out of the way. I, at least I thought so, but thankfully we do have some help with the checklist. We are not going to do the auto start. Heathblur have thankfully actually included one. And uh, I'm going to be very happy about that. But for now, we are actually going to do something as nice as to get a little bit of assistance with the checklist. So we're bringing up uh, Jester's menu here, and um, see here. If um, kind of interesting, I do press the I do press the buttons that is set telling me to um, press, but uh, we have no external air and power. Ah. Apparently we need both external air and power, and I hadn't actually turned on my communications menu. Uh, I hadn't actually bound that to my HODAS. So the f first thing we're going to do is um, tell the ground crew to get uh, our ground electrical power on. Chief, turn on the ground power. And... Um, Copy. Chief, connect ground air supply. Ground power is now on. Copy. Ground air supply is now connected. Ground air supply is now connected to our bird. Copy. So now that when that ICS com check, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. Okay. Hey man, you good? All right. Check landing gear indication extended and transition light off. I have no idea what that means, but we'll just assume. Select LTS on master test switch and verify all lights illuminate. Yeah, we're gonna have to zoom in a bit on this one. Oh, that's a nice click. Yeah, we locked it in to LTS and all lights are indeed illuminating. Select fire DET EXT on master test selector and verify left and right fire go lights illuminate. Left, right fire. Select INST on master test selector and verify that engine fuel, wing sweep, and alpha instruments are working. Oh dear lord, this is gonna take a while, ain't it? Especially as I actually missed what the hell I was going to... ...going to check there, so... Um, let's see if we can actually cheat Jester on this. Arm the ejection seat. Yeah, that, that one I know. Thank you. Done. It's armed. I can hear Jester doing s stuff in the back seat.
just gonna reset the track IR a bit so we don't collide with the chair. Oh, apparently I had not. Is there another button like that or... Yeah. Stop staring at me, Jester. I haven't done this before. I have literally never done this before, so... I'm just going to assume that's done. Yeah, I just had just forgotten to check it in. Close canopy. That was the parking brake handle, so... The problem with me reading the manual is that I absolutely don't remember anything of it. I just don't. Said gun rate, fight one or crew off, missile prep off, missile mode norm on ACM panel. Confirmed. Make sure emergency storage jettison push light is out. Confirmed. Set air source to off. If it's not already in that position, sure. <sighs> I'm not really comfortable with the track ARs, as it is, so... Set hydraulic transfer pump to off. So I'm just gonna have to... Yeah, this is... This is highly unreal... Under yeah, there we go. Set emergency flight hydraulics to low and check for on flag and emergency flight low hydraulic pressure window. Set emergency flight hydraulics to high and check for on flag and emergency flight high hydraulic pressure window. Set emergency flight hydro to auto. Engine crank switch to right, right throttle to idle at 20% RPM. Check that crank switch returns to off at around 50% RPM. Yeah, at this point in time, it might actually be a good idea for me to actually find the... Um, canopy. So I can close the goddamn thing. One would think it would be something... Well, obvious. Moving throttle to idle position. So far, the bird is not... Or are we? So far, no heat blur. Ah, I think we'll have to do this for each engine, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the details on the buttons are absolutely insane. I mean, it really looks like they have, like, wear and tear, and all I'm feeling when I'm sitting here is that I don't do this bird any justice at all. I'm basically just floundering my way through a startup sequence that is basically just a tutorial and uh, I basically just feel like I'm messing everything up yeah uh, Chrissy Ivan I have no idea if Jester closes the canopy or not so far Jester has not closed the canopy uh, so um, let's just hope Jester closes the canopy at some point because otherwise we are not gonna leave the ground until I've found the exact button. Okay, so heat blur is now emitting from one engine. I think we managed to shut the engine off again. God damn it.
Ah, we're good. Let's see if the, the other engine turns on. I mean, aside from the Flaming Cliffs bird, this is actually my first two engine... No, wait, the Hornet is a two engine aircraft, but I, sometimes I tend to forget that. Uh, but then again, I didn't learn the Hornet all that well. I mean, come on. Where's my second engine, mate? Yeah, we're not gonna try and start moving with just one engine. That would be madness. Okay, so so far we have managed to turn on one engine. I mean, I've been here for like 10 minutes and uh, only one engine is currently online. God fucking damn it. And the problem is I have no re not really any idea on how to proceed. How to make sure that the other engine actually does... Oh, that's why. Uh, the left engine throttle was still off. I had forgotten the engine had base... Uh, the engine... Uh, there are different throttles for each engine. I had forgotten about that. God fucking damn it. This was such an obvious thing as well. Such a bloody obvious thing. That's still the parking brake handle. I haven't been able to locate the... Uh Check that right generator and right fuel pressure caution lights are off. Check engine instruments within normal parameters. Uh, that doesn't look like lo normal parameters, uh, but I don't know what normal parameters are, so... Order plane captain to disconnect external power. Uh, you mean ground crew. As far as I'm concerned, I am... Uh, ground electric power is now off. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off. Copy, Chief. Engine crank switch to left. When combined hydraulic pressure reaches 3,000 psi, switch engine crank switch back to off. Yeah, I think we've already done this part. Set hydraulic transfer pump to normal. If we haven't done this part, uh, this is it's going to be really annoying. Set hydraulic transfer pump to off. Set engine crank to left. Left throttle to idle at 20% RPM. All right, check that crank switch returns to off at around 50% RPM. Check that left generator and left fuel pressure caution lights are off. Check engine instruments within normal parameters. Again, I have no idea what the hell nominal readings are. Order the plane captain to disconnect the external air. Okay, so ground air supply, disconnect. Chief, disconnect ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now disconnected. Thank you. Cycle air source switch to left, right, and then both engines and verify airflow in all positions. Left, right, both engines. Set hydraulic transfer pump to normal. 
what is it with this plane and the hydraulic pump at all times? How much? How many times am I gonna have to sw flip that? SAS switches to on. Cycle engine mode selectors and verify that each engine's secondary mode caution light illuminates. Uh, sorry guys, I need to get something done. Right now there is a lot of light streaming into the room and it might interfere with the track IR. So I am going to have to put it, take it off and I'm going to need to get some curtains in the way. Sorry about this. go oh look we actually stood up in the plane <laughs> the stuff you can get away with um, so we were gonna check those things for something that UHF function selector to TR plus G or both yeah my track IR is still acting up a bit Standing up in the plane, just making sure everything is all right. Yeah, radio is online. Set tack and function selector to TR. Done. ARA 63 power switch to on. Done. Turn on all displays. I cannot enough say how satisfying the clicks are from those displays. Okay, that's just the brightness, so we're good. Turn on radar altimeter. Radar altimeter is... Yeah, right now we are on zero, right? So... Set trim to zero. Yeah, trim is barely zero, so we'll make do with that. Erect the standby attitude gyro. Again, one of those things that I have no idea how it should look when it's done. Extend speed brake partially, retract then extend fully, check for fluctuations and stabilizer to verify... Oh crap, that was not... That was the parking brake, not the thing we were actually supposed to test. But I suppose this is just the time for us to close the canopy. Oh, did you hear the sound when the canopy locked? Honestly, the sound of that canopy locking was uh, just amazing. Wonderful. Alright, so we'll just assume that it's Extend good. And retract refuel probe. Oh, this I mean the sounds coming from this bird is nice. Emergency wing sweep handle to fall forward. Oh, and that that's not just a flip either. You have to drag it with your mouse. That that's just amazing. I mean, so far. This module has really been impressive, and I mean really impressive. Oh wait, that's 
probably going to stay forward for the takeoff. According to the situation. Yeah, I don't think we need external lights. We have a big fucking external light right over there. Verify flaps and flaps operation and set to down. Oh, and th this one is also one that you have to have to actually uh, properly, I might add. Flight controls wipe out. I have no idea what that means. Toggle DLC and verify stabilizer shift with DLC input. Set anti switch to spoiler only. Test spoilers and throttles. Set anti skid spoiler brake switch to off. It's off. Retract flaps and flats. Set maneuver flaps to down. Set wing sweep to 50 degree using manual mode. 50 degrees, manual mode. Retract maneuver flaps. Retracting maneuver flaps. Set wing sweep mode to bomb and verify maneuver flap retraction. I have no idea what that means, but I think that means... Uh... Set emergency sweep handle to 68 degrees. Oh, come on. How many of these are we going to test? Oh wait, 68 degrees might actually be the lowest. Yeah, it is. Set emergency sweep handle to 68 degrees, then over sweep until HZ tail authorization caution light goes out and over flag appears in the wing sweep indicator. I'm sorry, what? Set wing sweep mode to auto. Yeah, that sounds like the option we want. Only that I have no idea where to find it. Of course. Press the master reset button. Master reset. Run radar altimeter bit test. Check that displays are set as needed. Displays are set as needed. Run TAC and bit. Run ARA 63 bit. The problem is I don't really know how much of this I can actually skip for just a test flight. Set altimeter reference pressure and reset mode. Uh, yeah, we don't need that. Compare compass heading with IMU heading on HUD, VDI, HSD, and BDHI. Check flight instruments. Flight instruments are good. Yep. Alright, uh, so we are done with our sh our skit here. Um, Alright, let's go. Shooter taxi. I just realized one thing. I'll have to check the controls for this. Yeah, as um, I suspected, I had not uh, any nose wheel toggle for this. Uh, 
And it's a straight up toggle, so I don't actually have to worry. Sushi, in field, 1-1, one, one. request takeoff. Uh, right, let's see how she handles in the air. I mean, uh, takeoff was a bit of a... Well, I'm not gonna say it because... <sighs> but that entire checklist, I don't... I think it took me about 15 minutes just to get through it. And that was the assisted one. I re... I mean the assisted one. That's just embarrassing. I seriously need to return to the manual for this one. Just make sure I know where everything is and stuff like that. Then again, I'm gonna have a flight school later today, but uh, that flight school also does assume that um, I know a bit about what I'm what I'm doing. Right now it doesn't feel like uh, I know what I'm doing. Most likely because this is the first flight. Alright. So I'm just going to... Uh, Yeah, we good. Sushi, in field. One, one. Request takeoff. We'll have to do this by the numbers. In field, one, one. Sushi, you are cleared for takeoff and ready. Climb 300 at QFE 29.82. Sochi Tower, confirm. Climb 300 at QFE 29.82. I really like how every part of the airplane actually shakes. I mean, it's... The experience is quite incredible. It has to be better in, in uh, VR. But um, then again, it might actually be some kind of error of mine that makes sure that the airplane is actually acting this way. Holy shit, this is probably not good. I read somewhere that uh, you should take off the t Tomcat at full military power, but right now I don't really know what to think about that one. Then again, we didn't use the full airstrip either, we just used the shorter one. And we are officially airborne. So let me take the wings into... There we go. So far, so good. Oh, and here we have all the stuff Jester is trained to do. Uh, at least compared to the weapons. So... We don't really have that much ordnance on board that is uh, Jester's prerogative to use. So far, I have to say she, she flies rather stable. It's not really like a Hornet, but it's also not anywhere like, say, the F5 or the MiG-21, she can absolutely stay in 
I need to see if that really happened. Yeah. Even when I'm using my HOTAS throttle, I can hear the clicks from the cockpit instruments. And that is just... That is just top-notch stuff. Jester, are you um, very scared back there? <laughs> um, I know I would be if I was my own Rio. That said, it would actually be nice to try out the Rio role at some point. So. Like I said, this is the first flight without any of the tutorials, so I have no idea if there's anything I should do before landing this thing. But um, I think that what I really should do now is uh, take her for a little more of a flight. And <laughs> no, Barat, I do not know that. I found myself uh, very unprepared to fly this bird. Uh, everything that I read in the manual was basically went in one way and went out another way. So, yeah. It makes sense for the wings to be extended on takeoff, but um, yeah, I fucked up. And believe me, it's not going to be the first fuck up of today, nor is it going to be the last. I really haven't really noticed how the sidewinder there hangs at a bit of an angle. Most likely so both of them can actually hang next to each other. Because if you have a look at that place, and I should also have a look on where I'm flying, by the way. Um, you can see that the fins of the missiles are almost touching, but they're actually not doing that. Still, the attention to detail on this aircraft is just amazing. I mean, just look at this. I mean, flying this bird over the Caucasus does not do it any justice. I, In fact, I would go so far as to say that I don't think there's any terrain in DCS that would do this bird justice. I mean, and I don't really have a monster of a computer either. I still run on a 1060 with 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM. So, just seeing the fact that the Tomcat actually looks really good. Yeah, uh, their Vigan was my... Uh, was actually the thing that got me into DCS. I had my own flight simulator mod project that was focused on Sweden. And during a sale, I was like, why haven't I flown this? So I got DCS Vigan, the, uh, and uh, they sold me immediately. And compared to, especially Raspam's bird, I mean, they're fun to fly. I love the Mirage 2000 to death. It's a bit of an odd bird, in my opinion, because I do not fly it as often as I would like to, but uh, it's easily one of my favorite dogfighters. But in a way, it doesn't really have the spit and polish that this obviously does. I mean, just the thing that if I increase the throttle, we hear the clicks from the actual throttle. Never mind the thing that they actually decided that, hey, the F-14 is actually a plane where you need a Rio. So they could have just made it a, to, uh, a plane that needed two people to fly. They could have just made it so. But no, they decided that, hey, the single player guy is 
might actually want something as well. So they went with the Jester AI. So so far we are basically doing uh, pilot training day two stuff here. That's an obvious exaggeration, but I mean, god damn it! Just flying around in it is is nice. I can't get over how what an experience it is. I mean, if someone is flying this thing and put a phoenix in your ass in multiplayer, then at least you know they worked for it. Uh, also, we I noticed that we actually are gaining in altitude. So, I, I'm thinking about either taking a flight down to Georgia, or up the coast. Yeah, I think, since we took off from Sochi, uh, I think we are going to head up the coast. I'm just, let me just consult the F-10 map. Uh, I would prefer to land at Anapa. Uh, or we could head for Sinaki. I don't know why I think I should be flying to either of those things. But let's let's head for um, Anapa. No doubt I'm gonna crash there, but... Oh, look! We actually managed to load an unbalanced load. Uh, Sidewinder on this one and AIM-7 on the other one. We do, however, not have any aerial targets to speak of. I have no idea what just happened. I basically just clicked something and um, on utility. Lantern? Okay. And something just went boom in the airplane. That really sounds like me flying in a nutshell. You really want me to roll this thing? Okay, if you want me to roll this thing, uh, as long as you are, I don't know why, but some some part of the view just became very dizzy. Yeah, a lot of stuff here just went very dizzy. Uh, maybe we didn't turn on the oxygen. Oh god, I think I re recognize that from the big and that might actually be our engines. And if that is our engines, we might actually want to turn back to... Uh, to Sochi. Speaking about how it rolls... Well, it rolls fairly nice. So, uh, yeah, we're going to RTB to Sochi, because right now we do have... I'm fairly certain this is an oxygen issue. Either that or we've been shot by Jester, who's like, No, I'm not flying with this pilot anymore. And then I'm gonna have to find a human Rio. So, uh, your speculations in the comments to as to why stuff is hazy. Yeah, probably hypoxia. Uh, but still, I think that the uh, very idea that Jester shot me due to being such a disgrace for a pilot in this thing, it, it does have merit. You have, to, you have to admit that. So, we'll just head down to the lower altitudes. And, um, well, we can actually see if there's a... S nope. If we have to find an oxygen, we might have to look on the cockpit board at some point. And I didn't actually print the manual, so shame on me. 
Yeah, the uh, theory of hypoxia actually seems... Master Arm is now on. Just be so we can have a bit of fun with that. Gun rate is low. Well... I can see a bit of environmental destruction down there. In the shape of an oil platform. So let's roll in with guns. And uh, sabotage the Russian oil industry. Also known as Act of War. I haven't toggled any of my sights or anything. But we'll just have to... Oh! I just managed to eject Jester straight down into the water. <laughs> I don't know what I... I don't know how I what I expected would happen. <laughs> I don't know wh why I expected a different outcome. So let's just um, yeah. We won't quit to the desktop. Instead, we will be quitting to. Yeah, so we crashed. First mission in this thing, and we crashed. We didn't even have... Oh, there's actually a dogfight training mission. There's also a number of uh, Nevada missions, a number of Persian Gulf missions. So, let's just do something horribly stupid. And uh, pick the dogfight option. I don't have any any uh, confidence that my dogfighting skills in the F-14 is up to the task at all. Okay, so the threat is not a MiG-28, it's a Su-27. God damn it! We are so screwed. We are so screwed. Oh, and it's guns only, it appears. I think we got the guy straight ahead. So, Jester, you'll spot for me, right? Apparently someone did a better job uh, starting. Finish your sentence, Jester. Monster Arm is on and merged. Ah, crap. Either my track AR is not toggled properly or it has the same problem as in the Vegan, where I can actually, if uh, I have a problem, stand up through the cockpit roof. I don't like that, because I didn't get a track IR to spot through the roof. Jester, you'll have to talk to me, because I have no idea where the fuck he went. Still that wonderful thing of uh, hearing the Roger. button. Six o'clock, six o'clock. Copy. We'll dive for the deck, hang on. Diving for the deck did not save me last time. It most likely won't save me this time either. But this time we are going to try and make the pull up significantly. Uh, more controlled. Going to try and see if um, he followed me or not. He's trailing us, closing. Yeah, that he is. I can see him. He's on our six, closing. Roger that. Let's see about getting a bit lower. Oh, come on. I wish there was a way for the track AR not to do that. Because it's really annoying when it does. Yeah, I can still see him. Yeah, he's found guns. 
We'll hit the brakes, he'll fly right by us, or we'll or we'll just die. Oh god, not again. Jester, just get out. You deserve a better pilot than me. <laughs> At least Jester survived this time around. <laughs> Basically, it was a lot of running, just like Doctor Who. A whole lot of running. Let's just do a, now a cold start, and we'll see about having a landing this time. Then I will most likely continue my learning in uh, basically without the pressure of a stream because right now I just feel like I'm making an ass of myself So this time we are going to try another feature of the Tomcat. Uh, we are going to see if... Yeah, that... For some reason that didn't actually clear it. We are going to test the auto start. And the reason we're going to test the auto start is because I'm not going to sit 15 other minutes with uh, Jester doing everything. Besides, it's a new plane, why not test everything? That said, I know that I'm currently throwing away what is basically my best right. chance to actually learn the bird. Because uh, w the problem with auto start is that it becomes so tempting to use it at all times that uh, the regular learning process for the um, for everything yeah basically some of my mates are also on Teamspeak so. Uh, including a guy who actually knows a bit about the Tomcat, but I'll just finish this flight landing and um, then we'll see if I can actually land this thing. Chief, turn off the ground power. I wonder how long this will take with uh, the auto start sequence compared to me trying to do it. Chief, disconnect ground air supply. Chief, turn off the ground power. At the very least, it's far more efficient. So right now we are waiting for INS alignment. Let's just have a drink while that happens because that might take a while.
have a backfire taking off from the strip. And we're still waiting for the INS alignment. Yeah, we can actually go now. Roger, okay. I wonder if that prohibits the auto start or if. <laughs> Basically, the auto start seemed to just. Uh... Yeah, we'll see when auto start decides that it's done. At least the engines are spooled up and good to go. about the data link. Copy. I have no idea what I just told Jester to do. Beyond visual range, within visual range, navigation utility, CMR and defensive, crew contact. Oh, we can, uh, <laughs> we're not going to eject both. It would have been interesting to see uh, Jester eject both, but uh, we're not gonna do that. Still awaiting fireness. Oh, look at those electrical cables right in front of the cockpit right there. That's some goddamn detail. Imagine someone actually took the time to model those correctly, knowing that a lot of people would not notice them. Yeah, so just lean back and wait for the INS alignment, I suppose. Yeah, waiting for the INS alignment, like. Let's see if we can uh, add some cargo to the plane while we're waiting.
Let's grab a air to, air to ground. I don't know what the ADM is, but we'll have a look at that. Yeah, so this is probably gonna take a while. Alright, let's just go. We can... Well, we haven't actually gotten most of our new weapons yet, so we'll need to wait for those first. And this time we'll make sure that our wing sweep is in a full position. Parking brake is gone. This is so going to ruin our INS alignment. Oh yeah, there's one thing I actually need to check too. Yep. There is one. Sweet. Left shift M. This thing has a Walkman! And we have Meteor in our ears. Not now. But now. Off we go. Yeah, I think that was a bit far too... I shouldn't have tried that. I should not have tried that. Oh god, that's just embarrassing. I mean, that was just me fooling around and thinking I could actually get away with uh, roll, uh, doing a roll at such low altitude. But hey, that Walkman at least... At least we felt cool before we died, and that is what matters. So, I'm actually going to turn off the stream now, and the reason I'm gonna do that is because I need to get some me time with this bird. Uh, no offense, but I'm not really that good with learning stuff when I have to do it in front of people who actually watches it. So, this has been a decent first impression. Thank you, guys. Uh, this 
thank you for uh, keeping me company in chat. And yeah, I know you want to learn with me. And above all else, you probably want to learn from my mistakes. Alright, we'll take one more flight. We'll take one more flight. And this time... I, actually, I should really just put it to myself that... I'm not allowed to... Uh, actually, let's do the similar Air Combat Training Fox 2. And if this mission does ha doesn't have a MiG-28 in it, I'm going to be mad. Then I want my money back. So, is this mission going to have a MiG-28? Probably not. I've probably jinxed it, but then again... So, we are loading, and uh, yeah, not really much to say what it does. God damn it, I've already flown this bird for an hour, and I know next to nothing still. This is going to be one of those birds that take you a while to actually get to know, and... I mean, I like that, because when I got the Mirage 2000, then... Uh, to be honest... The Mirage 2000 is still one of my favorite birds, but um, I felt like I learned it far too quick. I mean, there wasn't really much to learn in it save for the flight char characteristics and stuff like that. So, yeah, there's an F5E ahead at, at 10 nautical miles, and the objective is ACM training with either rear aspect AIM-9s or guns. If you succeed, you can also request another opponent via the radio. Uh, right, so this is me in... Yeah, um, we need to actually know how to select the weapons, because I haven't actually gotten that far. Uh, regard as regards to the cheating panel, which all of us do want to use, there's only the all to start there. So uh, I'm going to see here if uh, aim nine cooling toggle was select. Ah, weapon selector gun. Uh, so we're gonna put that on our stick in a similar manner to what I've done with the hornet. Uh, it does help if we can actually use the sidewinders for this one. And of course... I can see the gap. Fight's on! Bandit! MiG-28! Oh, nice one, Jester, nice one. He actually called it out as a MiG-28. Yeah, I can see him. He's flaring. 12 o'clock high. Fox 2. Mexico. 7 o'clock low. I don't think we got him. Jester, did you take the tape out of my... Uh... 9 o'clock low. Hot. Yeah, I can see him. Five o'clock. Missile. Five o'clock. Yeah, that didn't go so well. Let's get uh, let's get some vengeance on that guy. Let's try that again. And above all else, I'm very very disappointed in that uh, the walkman didn't actually turn on. I mean, we need our walkman for this. We need the meteors tunes in our helmets. Uh, 
So I'm just gonna have a look at just controls and make sure I actually... Yeah, so play is left shift M, not control M. There we go. Now we have the proper tunes, right? Okay, we're on. Bandit. Hey, six o'clock. One mile. Hey, six I mean, this is a very heavy bird to fly as well. And against a smaller opponent like the F5, it's going to be tricky. Basically, now we're just standing still in the air, too. Oh god, we are spinning out. This is not good. Actually, this is me doing it, so... Uh, yeah, we're not gonna... S uh, I was actually sure we were gonna crash that time. So, this is me just knowing exactly nothing about what I should be doing. Oh, uh, we did shake him? God damn it. Yeah, I can see him now. The problem is I don't know the envelope to which I can push this aircraft so far, and that is just annoying as hell. But we have better engines than he do, so let's use that and pull up. And see if he dares follow us. My hope is that he can. What is... Oh, we're hit. Engines are out. It was a must have been a really proximity hit. Uh, do we have any airstrips around here? I mean, trying to fight in this bird was obviously a mistake. From uh, Jester, I need you to find us an airbase right now. Ah, oh, god damn it! Let's put the wings on glide. I say again, we put the wings on glide. Uh, did we just lose the wing knob? Same with the flap. Same with the flaps. Flaps down. Flaps down. Flaps down. All the way. Looks like we are not going anywhere. So basically, trying to take on a MiG-28. That was folly on uh, my part. Yeah, I actually do have a... Um, I was in luck. Uh, first of all, I was basically just sitting there waiting for it to... Let's just put Nelly's landing. Um, I was just sitting down waiting for it to hit, and I have a uh, hundred and a hundred, um, hundred up, hundred down connection. So Nellis have cleared me for runway 21 left with a VFR approach and the standard overhead break. Uh, manually sweep your wings, you will proceed under the runway to and exit. Uh, yeah. Now, we are not going to follow any sort of procedure here. We are not going to do any overhead brakes. We are not going to do anything of the sort. We are going to make sure this bird gets on the ground. We are um, probably going to... Yeah, this is going to have to be on a 68. <sighs> but we'll wait with that until we actually close in. And let's make sure our throttle is low and we have the Nellis airstrip just ahead now there is a very fair criticism of me that is actually reflected in my call sign my call sign is shooter 
The reason my call sign is shooter is because I'm the kind of flight guy who just wants to come up and shoot. And when I actually do shoot, I am more happy to actually shoot rather than shoot very well, hence shooter. Uh, yeah, now I understand why they want us to do the overhead break, because we are gonna have... We're gonna have a problem with... Let's get the flaps down, and let's not do the kind of landing where... Uh, our wings are still not at 6.8. Uh, at any rate, part of the call sign is also, I'm not good at landings. When I say I'm not good at landings, I mean I don't land in one piece in half of the times. And now I'm gonna land a completely unknown bird with uh, a method I just invented right on the spot. And uh, probably coming in far too fast as well. So we're... 300 feet. Thank you, Jester. You are a great help. 200 feet. 200 feet. 100 feet. 100 feet. 30. Hit the deck. We came in far too fast. Pull up. Yeah, we came in far too f far too fast on that landing. And it's kind of interesting to see that Jester did not have a horrible comment for us. Because we would really have deserved a horrible comment for that landing. Also, we do not have any weapons, so we can't strafe the Trump Tower despite us really wanting to do that. I really like having Jester around though. I mean, it's a really li really nice mechanic by Hitler. And one that I really hope is used in... If Eagle Dynamics ever get the F4 Phantom done, I want Jester or something like him to be in that module. Okay, so gears out. And let's do another completely insane landing just because. Well, basically just because. Let's see if. Whoops! <laughs> I might actually want to keep an eye on where I'm flying. So 21 left was the S. 300 feet? Yeah, that's far too low. Two hundred feet. Let's see. Yeah, this is good. One hundred feet. Hell in a handbasket. Very bumpy ride here, gentlemen. Yeah, and it's going to be bumpier still because we need to get off the tarmac. We're coming in far too fast here. Wheels up. I really need to get more patience with my landing. But at least we managed to uh, not be a bolter. Third time's to charm, eh? 
that said, we have ruined our landing gear, so... I am probably not going to... I'm gonna do a Harmon Rap Jr., basically, and I don't mean the part where he actually does land the plane. So let's reduce speed. Oh right, we have air brakes. Of course we have air brakes. God damn it. Is is I really feel stupid imagining that we have air brakes at this point. Especially as the air brakes could have been far more useful earlier. So now the tricky point begins, because I'm fairly certain I extended the air brake far too early. Five hundred. Copy. Four hundred feet. This is not gonna end well. 300 feet. We are... 200. Yeah, that's not good. Easing her down. It's not the best landing I've ever done, but it's not the worst either. I mean, for fur times to charm, I mean, they'll have to replace th the tires most likely. And uh, I haven't actually stopped the bird yet, but uh, for an ad hoc landing, it could be worse. Well, until one of those sparks ignites some leftover fuel and we go up in flames, of course, but. I mean, we're underground. Uh, now let's control. This aircraft ha is, should probably not be taxed until we had someone take it to the bike shop and take a look at the landing gear. Also, <laughs> yeah, I know that the landing is very sloppy. Uh, Widowmaker, I'm using the X-52 uh, Logitech. Not the best thing I would uh, go for. Uh, as Mitch says, the Warthog Hodaz is the best one. And so if you're looking, if you're in a market for a Hodaz, I would go for the Warthog. And yes, you can think it's sloppy if you like. But uh, my time on this bird so far is 1 hour and 20 minutes, so I'll give you that one. To be fair, I don't expect my, my flying in this bird to be impeccable in under less than a month. Then again, I do have a flight school scheduled this very evening, so... But that will have to be it for the time being, uh, so I can get some of the more boring systems analysis done, uh, especially with the manual on alt tab. Take care guys, even you Barat, and I'll see you guys next time. Entry team, additional operators have just arrived.